Shalom. Many of you may remember two summers ago, we stood out in, I guess you would say, the courtyard of City Hall um, in the heat of another uh, conflict in the Middle East. And in the middle of the event, and there were thousands of you, I'll never forget that, a rainbow appeared in the sky. You remember that? And we had been so fearful that it would rain upon our expression of solidarity with Israel. Uh, but the heavens had another plan. And the heavens smiled down upon us. This morning you all got up. And it was gray. It was drizzling a bit. And a few hours ago, again, the heavens smiled down upon us. And the sun came out. Why particularly does the sun shine on us today? Or did the sun, sun shine on us today? Well, let me present my own explanation. Israel's long-term sustainability, I believe, rests on three very important pillars. One, internal cohesiveness. Two, our ability to defend ourselves by ourselves and recognition of our legitimacy and our right to defend ourselves. And third, a reinforced strategic partnership with the United States, our only strategic partner and our only best friend in the international community. And today we have an event here and we have a situation on the ground which embodies all three very firmly in place. And so I'm not just gratified but overjoyed that our two friends from Congress, Congressman Kennedy and Congressman Walton have joined us today to express um, the strength of that strategic partnership, which Israel needs so much. And it goes beyond that. What is internal cohesiveness? Yes, absolutely, in Israel, it's the ability to promote coexistence, which all of you know I have promoted myself since I came to New England and certainly in Israel. But it's also the co cohesiveness of our community. And as I've reinforced over and over, particularly in the last challenging months, Israel must be a unifying force for the community. And the community must be a unifying force for Israel. And nothing embodies that better, I think, than the trip that Barry Schrag and Jeremy Burton and others took in the past week to Israel, and I'm sure they'll talk about it. Israelis have been very resilient in this uh, very challenging time. But I certainly wouldn't overlook the resilience of yourselves, where you could just stay here and just you know, express your support without actually going over. And yet you do over and over and over and over again, so that Israelis know that they're not alone. You don't know how important that is for us. It is so, so reinforcing. And so we have watched Israeli society from afar and from nearby, again being resilient. But I like to point out that this, the resilience of Israeli society, it comes from somewhere. It comes from, obviously, what we have within us and understanding that this is our homeland, Israel. And we're not going anywhere. And we have a responsibility to defend our people. But it goes beyond the society. We see it in our security forces, which I'm sure most of you have noticed include both Jews and non-Jews. And they have been defending, as they are always entrusted with to defend, Israelis, whether Jewish or non-Jewish. And in the last month, we have seen countless cases of Jews defending non-Jews and non-Jews defending Jews. Because that's the task at hand. And it's even gone further than that. On Sunday, there was a case where um, two border police persons were stabbed. And a medical team was called in from the IDF. Lieutenant Moshe Cohen and his team, and they arrived at the scene 
and they split up. One half of the medical team went to treat the injured soldiers. The other half went to treat, no more, no less, the injured terrorists. Thank God the border policemen were fine. And so the treat that went to, see that, to treat them went to treat the terrorists. One terrorist was dead. The other was in his, really, the final seconds of his life. And the medics used a cutting edge plasma treatment and saved his life. I'm not just talking about what happens in Hadassah Hospital 24-7. I'm talking about soldiers. And so this comes from somewhere, and it comes from the highest level of our leadership, where we have to defend our people, and we have to respect life. And this trickles down from top to bottom. And believe me, we were very close to the third rail in the last few weeks. And the leadership of Israel and the United States, in Jordan particularly, were astute enough to move it away from that third rail. And so while we still have violence in Israel, it is diminishing. And since this is just not about resilience, but also about hope, I think this evening we can be hopeful that the situation is moving further and further away from the third rail, back to where cooler heads preside. And when the t time is ripe and the conditions are right, we can move forward again to try to figure out a way to resolve this conflict. And so I just want to end by expressing again my gratitude for you being here today, for expressing support for Israel and solidarity with Israel, and for emphasizing in the best way possible that Israel is a unifying force, the centrality of Israel, and the unity of the community. Toda